Rhythm is something that you either have or don't have, but when you have it, you have it all over. Elvis Presley. While I appreciate the musical brilliance of the king of rock and roll, I think he may have sort of misunderestimated how much rhythm plays a role in our daily lives, as, and for this it applies to all listeners. Rhythm is all around us. It plays a large role in our music experiences, whether it's doing the whip at a club with your friends, or listening to your favorite band at the local bar. You may have even experienced rhythm while you watched the Bellagio show as Celine Dion played across the speaker. However, rhythm plays a role in many other aspects of our lives. It plays a role in rocking a baby to sleep, the rhythmic way that we walk, or even the rhythmic regularities you may be hearing in my speech right now. My research looks at how we perceive rhythm in our auditory environment. Specifically, I am interested in what is going on in the brain while we perceive rhythm in our daily lives. One important aspect to musical rhythm is the beat. The beat is where you would likely find yourself clapping along to the music. Now let's say that I played six tones for you as presented by those blue dots. You could hear these six tones as having one of two beat patterns. You might hear two strong beats or three strong beats in the group of tones. If you heard two strong beats, you might hear one, two, three, four, five, six. If you heard three strong beats, you might hear one, two, three, four, five, six. These two beat patterns are really strong and prevalent in musical pieces. So what I ask my participants to do is complete a rhythm task where they listen to a piano player play a song on her piano that has one of these two beat patterns and judge whether or not a drummer is matching or not matching the beat. While they do this rhythm task, I also record neural activity using continuous cortical EEG. During, so by applying this paradigm, I can look at how listeners perceive the beat in the rhythm task while simultaneously looking at how the beat might be present in the neural activity. So when I look at the EEG data, I would expect to see higher amplitudes of neural activity occurring at the same time that the beat is being perceived in the music. This is a crucial next step in the research for us to better understand how we are perceiving rhythm in our environment and how our brains are helping us do that. Now, most individuals don't have a problem understanding and perceiving rhythm in their daily lives. However, there are some individuals who have a more difficult time with this. Children with language deficiencies, such as those with dyslexia or stuttering, have been shown to also have rhythm deficiencies. If we can identify these rhythm deficiencies from a neural perspective, then we may be able to use a paradigm such as this to identify at-risk children for these future language acquisition problems. This research could lead to a potential early identifier for these children that may be at risk for later language delays. This could lead to earlier intervention techniques and in education to help these children as they develop language in school. Thank you.